Amen. Well, the brother has said much better about me than I deserve. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, I am so thankful for the grace of God. Amen. Bring the salvation to Jews, Gentiles, even people from Tennessee. Right. <laughs> what a blessing that is. I, I'm just humbled that the Lord would, would see fit to use us in the ways that he has. Um, okay, this isn't preaching, this is just testifying, but he has been so good to me. Amen. Uh, he has done far more abundantly than I would ever deserve. Amen. If I got my just desserts, I'd split hell wide open. Right. Uh, but <laughs> by his grace, Amen. he saved me. Oh, oh. Uh, by the blood of Calvary's cross, my sins were washed away. And uh, oh, how I thank him tonight. Oh, how I praise him tonight for his goodness to me. And uh, I just, just overcome how he's seen fit to use my wife and I. You'd be praying for us as we seek God's will for our life and what he would have us to do. We, we love being here in this part of the country, and it's been such a blessing, this, this meeting. We've looked the last couple of nights uh, on the theology of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing those studies have been. Amen. So I ask you tonight if you would turn in your Bibles to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10. And you would remember that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, the first night we were together, we studied on what Jesus believes about God, and we looked at that there from Revelation chapter number 1, what Jesus believes about God, and we saw the self-description that he gave to John the Apostle there on the island of Patmos. Amen. How, how desperately we need to see him exalted and glorified. Amen. And then last night, we studied a very important portion of Scripture as we looked at what Jesus believes about the church. After all, it is the church that he built Amen. during his earthly ministry. And so I thank you for going to get ecclesiology. We ought to get it from the builder of the church. Amen. Amen. Uh, oh, how, oh, how much I care about that doctrine. And I don't want to re-preach it. Uh, but I do think that that is something that uh, is far and few in between. Uh, it's it's right. scarce and hard to find. And, you know, you can, you can find great men that uh, God has revealed the glorious truths of sovereign grace. Amen. Uh, and they, they preach it like uh, none other, but then when they come to the church, uh, suddenly they want to ask, what do men say about the church? What do the reformers say about the church? Uh, but I think we as Baptists, we, we are founded upon the question of what does Jesus believe Amen. about the church? Amen. That was last night, and then tonight in John chapter number 10, I want to close out tonight, Lord willing, on this question. What does Jesus believe about redemption? What does Jesus believe about redemption? So if you would, John chapter number 10. And when you found your place, if you would stand in order of the reading of God's word, we'll begin at verse number 11. John chapter number 10 at verse 11. The Bible says this, I am the good shepherd. Amen. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, yeah. and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Right. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, Amen. and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. And no man taketh it from Amen. me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to 
take it again. Amen. This commandment have I received of my Father. Lord, we bow in your presence tonight, and we exalt the risen Christ, and we give you honor and glory for all that you've done. Lord, I pray that that one that's nearest hell here tonight, that they would look unto Jesus, that they would see him as he has revealed himself in the word of God, uh, that they would see themselves as a sinner, uh, that they would repent of their sin and turn with the eye of faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that you'd revive your people here tonight, that you would bless the assemblies that are gathered together, the local churches that are here tonight. Oh, how unworthy I am, Lord, to preach this gospel. Lord, I, I confess tonight that, that I am unable to minister to hearts. Lord, I, I, I cannot uh, bless anyone. I, only the Spirit of God can do that. And I pray that you use the preaching of your word. By the foolishness of preaching, you've been pleased to save some. And I Amen. pray that you would do that here Amen. tonight. It's in Jesus' name. We'll be careful to give you all the glory for all that you do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The text before us tonight lies at the heart of the saving mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. These verses are primary in importance. Jesus is the speaker. And this is Jesus' own commentary on his own death and resurrection. He says more of his own death here in this text than he does in any other portion of Scripture. Right. Now this text is Christ preaching Christ. Now this is Jesus preaching Jesus. Here we have the greatest preacher that ever lived preaching the greatest subject that ever was. This is Christ Jesus expositing himself. Amen. Now Jesus is both speaker and subject. He is both teacher and theme. He is both preacher and proposition. And Jesus is bearing his own heart and his own soul concerning his death on the cross. Amen. No one preaches Jesus Christ any better than Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is what Jesus believes about redemption. Now, this is what Jesus believes about how a man is saved. Now, this is what Jesus believes believes about the atonement. And, and I do not seek to tell you anything tonight uh, more than what Jesus tells us here. I do not wish to approach this passage with great wit or great oratory. Uh, but my duty before you tonight is to bow before this text uh, and yield to the supremacy of our Lord's teaching. Amen. And my prayer is that uh, God would use this portion of Scripture uh, to exalt His Son Amen. in the hearts of men and women tonight, uh, that you might see Jesus Christ in His saving power. Amen. My prayer is that Christ would be lifted up. Amen. I, I cannot draw any of you to Him tonight. I, I cannot bring any of you to salvation. Uh, but Christ gave us this sovereign promise. He said, if I be lifted up, Amen. I will draw all Amen. men Amen. unto me. And my prayer is that those of you who are outside of Christ would cease from your rebellion and turn from your sin and flee to the Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Christ. He begins this chapter with an allegory. And we want to make the distinction between an allegory and a parable. See, a parable has one driving truth. And if you try to make a parable stand on all four legs, you'll find out that you're going to get yourself in trouble. You have to figure out what that one driving truth is. But an allegory is multifaceted. And if you're going to understand the allegory, uh, you're going to have to examine all of its components. An allegory is like a parable on steroids. <laughs> and so here in... John chapter number 10, he begins with this allegory, and in verse 1, uh, he begins to speak about this community sheepfold. There are two sheepfolds in this text, and the first is this community sheepfold, and what that was, was it was a pen uh, that each city would have, and as shepherds were traveling through, they would leave their sheep in the community sheepfold, and then they would go off and rest for the night, and then in the morning, they would return back to that community sheepfold, and they would call their flock out by name Amen. and bring them out of the community sheepfold and go on in their journey. Yeah. Yep. This first sheepfold, the community sheepfold, is a representation 
of the mass of lost and fallen humanity. Mm -hmm. Everyone who is a son of Adam, everyone who is of the human race is in this community sheepfold by their first birth. Amen. And then in verse 2, Jesus, uh, he begins to introduce this idea of a true shepherd, the good shepherd. And this good shepherd is the rightful owner of his sheep. Amen. When he goes to the community sheepfold and he calls out amongst the mass of sheep that are there, only his sheep respond to his voice. Right. And, and they come unto their shepherd. Amen. When a stranger calls out to them, they do not follow. But they only go to the voice of their own shepherd. Amen. And when that shepherd calls out, all the sheep are grazing, and his sheep will one by one begin to lift up their heads. But the other sheep will keep their heads down and continue eating. But his sheep, they, they hear what the other sheep do not hear. Right. As he goes and he says, white nose, brown ear. The sheep respond, and they say, this is the voice of my shepherd, and I must go to him. Amen. This, of course, is that efficacious, irresistible, inward call of the gospel. Amen. Amen. As God's people, the flock of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear what others do not hear. When the gospel is verbally presented to a mixed multitudinous congregation, there will indeed be some of you that hear something uh, that the person sitting right beside you will not. That's it. This is the doing of the Lord. And Jesus Christ is this true shepherd. As he leads his flock out of fallen humanity. And once he has gathered them out of the community sheepfold, uh, the good shepherd uh, then goes and he takes them out to a plentiful pasture and he built his own sheepfold. That is the second sheepfold. Amen. Amen. And in this sheepfold, he constructs it in such a way uh, that he is able to protect and care for and continuously feed his sheep. Amen. This is the Lord Jesus Christ sanctifying and separating his own from the rest of humanity. Amen. In verse 9, we see this picture of the true sheepfold as he leads them to the countryside, and there he builds his own sheepfold. And then it says that the good shepherd himself lays his own body down at the door to that sheepfold. Amen. So that anything that desires to harm the sheep would have to come through him. Right. And if need be, the good shepherd gives his own life yep. for the protection of his sheep. This is the allegory that he presents to us. This is the context for what he then goes on to say in verse 11. And so as we look here at our text, beginning at verse 11, there's several things I want you to see. And the first is this. I want you to see the self-declaration. The self-declaration. The Lord Jesus says this. I am the good shepherd. Amen. And by saying these two simple words, I am, a Jesus says more than we can ever fathom with our human minds. This is first of all an exclamation of his deity. Here Jesus takes the divine title of Jehovah and applies it directly to himself. But this is the same name of God revealed unto Moses in Exodus 3 and verse 14. Right. Uh, this is the aseity of God. And that is, he is dependent upon nothing. Uh, but he subsists in the blessedness of his persons. Uh, and he is the one on whom all of us must depend. I am that I am. Not because Amen. I am, but that I am. <coughs> By claiming this divine title for himself, that uh, Jesus is acknowledging that he performs the works possesses the attributes, and receives the worship that is due unto God alone. Jesus is here saying that he is truly and fully God. 
that this is one of the seven I am statements found in the Gospel of John. And here, uh, this statement takes its place in the center of those seven statements uh, because the cross is in the smack dab middle of Christianity. In all things, the world of the Christian revolves around Calvary's cross. I am the good shepherd. Amen. Uh, this statement deals directly <laughs> with his sacrificial death. Therefore, it takes prominence among the other statements. Amen. But not only did he make an exclamation of his deity, but he then goes on to give an evidence of his exclusivity. He says, I am a the good shepherd. He did not say, I am a good shepherd. Right. Amen. He did not say, I am one of many good shepherds. He is not the good shepherd of the month. He is not the good shepherd of the year. Right. Uh, this is not a multiple choice where you get to choose from a host of many good shepherds. Jesus Christ said, I am the good shepherd. Amen. No one was the good Amen. shepherd before Christ, and no one will be the good shepherd after Christ. Uh, no one uh, became before him in this role. No one will ever succeed him in this role. Amen. He is the only good shepherd, the only one that has care uh, for your soul. Amen. As the brethren in the mountains of North Carolina like to put it, he's the holiest one. That's it. Uh -huh. yeah. And there ain't never going to be another. Mm -hmm. He is the good shepherd. But I want you to notice also that this is a statement of his sufficiency. Uh, he describes the quality of this shepherd in this one word, good. Uh, by saying this, Jesus is claiming uh, that he meets all the needs of all of his sheep. He is the shepherd that's excellent in character, supreme in being, absolute in holiness, and perfect in love. That you do not have a want that he cannot meet. You do not have a need that he cannot provide. You do not have a sin that he cannot save you from. You do not have a deficiency that he cannot overcome. He is the good shepherd. He is all in all. Amen. I know the ones that trust on him will find that he is all they will ever need. Amen. He said, I'm the water of life, and the one who drinks of that well will never thirst Amen. again. Uh, you get a taste of him, and nothing else will ever satisfy. Wow. You get ruined in a really Amen. good way. Amen. Spoiled Amen. by his grace. You need not look to the other sheep. You need not look to the other shepherds. He is the good shepherd. Amen. Look only to him. This is his self-declaration, but notice also the supporting details. You see, our Lord understands our frame. He understands that sometimes we need a little help in understanding the truths that he presents in his word. So he goes on to give us several reasons as to why he is indeed the good shepherd. Reason number one, we find it here in verse 11. The good shepherd dies for his sheep. Now, in presenting these reasons, uh, Jesus did not save the best for last. Uh, but Jesus begins to tell us why he's the good shepherd by laying down the ace of spades, uh, by throwing down the trump card, uh, by giving us the ultimate argument. He presents the central and foremost reason why he is the good shepherd, and it is because the good shepherd, verse 11, giveth his life for the sheep. That's it. Yeah. Oh, the very thought of a Christ who lays down his life on Calvary's cross to save his people should at once eliminate any objection. Oh, it should silence any doubt as to whether he is indeed the good shepherd. I want you to pay special attention to this word here at the end of the verse, for the sheep. This word uh, for, it, it is the pillar upon which the gospel rests. You see, uh, big doors swing on small hinges. And this word for, it denotes both the nature and the extent of his death. This word for tells us why Jesus came. This word for tells us for whom Jesus came. And this word for reveals the purpose of his condescension to earth. This word for determines whether or not Jesus actually accomplished something when he went to the cross. He died for the sheep. By using this preposition, 
Jesus is saying that his death is in place of and on behalf of the sheep. His death was a vicarious death. Amen. The Christ on the cross was there as a substitute for his people. Amen. He did not die for his own sins, for he had none. It's a but the Bible says that on Calvary's cross, the spotless Lamb of God was made to be sin. Right. That's right. He knew no sin. That's right. This is the great exchange that took place upon Calvary's cross. The, the worst about me given to him. Oh, the Amen. best of him given to me. Amen. Amen. And there as the sky turned black, as the Father turned his back on the Lord Jesus, he stood where all of us would have stood. Had he right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And he did that for the sheep. But not only was it substitutionary, let me tell you tonight that it was specific. Amen. Here in this verse, Jesus tells us exactly who he died for. Uh, he settles the debate once and for all. As he says, the good shepherd given his life for the sheep. That's it. And I want to say this unequivocally, that Jesus died for his sheep and his sheep only. You're right. And the saving work of Christ uh, was not merely an offer. It was not simply an opportunity, uh, but it accomplished something with divine certainty. Amen. And that is that all of Christ's sheep would be forever eternally secure Amen. and saved. That's it. Jesus did not go to the cross as a potential savior. He did not merely make salvation possible for all men, but he fully accomplished the salvation of a peculiar and particular people unto the uttermost. Amen. Amen. His sheep are the elect of God. Mm -hmm. His sheep are, are those found in him before the foundation of the world. Uh, though men would deny this truth, though our flesh hates to hear this truth, yet it remains true. Mm -hmm. And we must not succumb uh, to an, as we put it last night, a pagan Arminian recruitment program, mm -hmm. but we must uh, be firm and steadfast in preaching the biblical gospel. Amen. And the extent of his life will then determine the extent of his death. Can you tell me why he came? And I'll tell you for whom he died. That the same sheep that he called out of the sheepfold are the ones that he gave his life to save. Amen. <laughs> are those are the ones for whom he shed his blood. And here is the divine promise that all, 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 all of them would surely come unto him. Amen. Amen. You see, if Jesus had shed his blood uh, for everyone that was in that community sheepfold, uh, and then most of them would go on to reject him, uh, well, friend, he would be a bad shepherd. That's it. Oh, but the good shepherd loses not a one of his sheep. You're right. Yeah. Uh, we could, we could, Park on that thought all night, could we not? Mm -hmm. could, could we not give God all honor and glory uh, that, that for him to lose one of his sheep, that God would have to cease being God, that God would have to cease being true, that God would have to cease being just, uh, because if, if we believe that on the cross Jesus was our substitute and that the, the wrath that was due unto us was poured out upon him, if we really believe that, then we must affirm that by the grace of God, there is no wrath left for those in Jesus Amen. Christ. We must Amen. say with the Apostle Paul, that there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we must affirm the truth that unto us is nothing but goodness and grace. Amen. Amen. Oh, it sounds like an arrogant statement to make, but when you understand the justice of God, it is true. Amen. In and of myself, I deserve hell. Okay. In and of myself, I deserve wrath. Uh, but in the Lord Jesus Christ, I positionally deserve grace. Uh, people get uneasy when you say that, but when you, when you think through it, think through positional truth, think through a substitutionary death. The just for the unjust, his robes for mine, a wonderful exchange. Amen. Clothed in my sin, Christ suffered beneath God's rage. Right. 
draped in his righteousness, unjustified, saved by my Lord's vicarious death and death. Amen. Amen. He died for the sheep, and he is the good shepherd. He has accomplished all uh, that he intended to do upon Amen. the cross. He obeyed the commandment of the Father at every point, never turning from the left or the right. He ran his race well, and he bust through the finish line upon Calvary's cross. He did not say, I am finished, but he said, it is finished. That's and he it. accomplished Amen. the work that he set out to do. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But secondly, I want you to see this. The good shepherd loves his sheep. That's right. Reason number two, he loves his sheep. That Jesus is putting himself here in contrast to the hireling that didn't care for the sheep. See, the hireling only sought personal gain. Uh, but when he saw the wolf coming, when he saw trouble coming, he left the sheep. Mm -hmm. And the wolf devoured him. That's it. And, you know, so many of these other pagan religions, they teach a deity that does not care for the intricate details. That's right. That's right. of the life of their people. That's right. The Muslim believes that Allah never reveals himself, only his will. And so they live a life of bondage where they, they must right. work and work and work, never knowing they're standing before God. That's right. Oh, but I'm glad to report to you uh, that, that we worship a God who, who left the splendor of heaven and he came down to earth right. uh, and he bowed himself in humanity and he lived as we lived uh, and he clothed himself human flesh. Amen. Oh, he understands our sorrows. He's acquainted with grief. Amen. He's walked where we've walked. He's Amen. been tempted in all points Amen. like unto we were. Amen. He's dwelt with us in flesh. Mm -hmm. right. He walked among us. Amen. He understands. Oh, sacred lamb, you knew my name. You knew my heart and you knew my frame. You knew what I could never know. To Calvary you had to go to make me clean and white as snow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So the good shepherd has a personal and intimate relationship with his sheep. Notice he says here in verse 12. He talks about the hireling and he goes on to say, after verse 12 and 13 and verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. Good. Now this word know uh, does not merely denote he has a cognizant understanding of their existence. He did not say I know about my sheep, but he says I know them. And this word know, when we study it out, we find that this is the same language used in the Bible to describe the intimate relationship between a husband and wife. Uh, this is the same word here, where the Bible says that Adam knew his wife. See, this is the true definition of foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. some, some have a, such a faulty view of it, and what they really believe in is a foresight. Mm -hmm. You see, foresight teaches that, that God has set his uh, everlasting love and affections upon us because he looked down the corridors of time and saw something good within us. Uh, but this is pure pagan myth. Uh, this has no basis in the word of God. Right. Uh, this is absolutely a glorification of man. But let me tell you tonight that God is no respecter of Amen. persons because there's nothing in any person for him to respect. Uh, but God loved us because he loved us. Amen. Uh, God is love. He did not need us to be loved. He was loved before you and I were ever born. Uh, amen. What grace that is. This idea of foreknowledge. It means very simply that God set his everlasting love upon his people uh, before the world began. As he said in Romans 9, uh, before we had done good or evil. It is an unconditional, unmerited, and undeserved love that God has for us tonight. God never had to learn anything about us before he had already made the decision to save us. Right. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching a big God to you tonight. Amen. I'm preaching a big gospel to you tonight. 
Uh, the, the problem is that is not that uh, that we don't preach the gospel enough, but the problem is that we have reduced the gospel down and simplified it to the point that we don't understand its far-reaching implications. Good. Amen. The gospel is not merely a plan that happens in time, A, B, C, repeat after me. No, but the gospel was something purposed before the world. Amen. Began, and it is something that will not find its culmination until after this world is fulfilled. That is the gospel. Amen. It is overarching. It is overreaching. It is from eternity unto eternity. So you say that God sent the Lord Jesus Christ as the good shepherd and he died for his sheep. And you say that he loves his sheep. And we would say yes and amen to those truths. I have no qualms about declaring to you that the love of God is exclusively applied only to the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, right, now, now you're saying, well, you're starting to sound like an old primitive Baptist. You're starting to sound like a fatalist. You're starting to preach that there's no hope for us. But that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that the imperative is not on your faith. Amen. It's on the object of your faith. Mm -hmm. The imperative tonight is that you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, Amen. Amen. There's nothing that you need to do to earn your salvation. Right. There's no work that must be accomplished in order uh, for you to be justified before God. Uh, it's not anything that you can achieve through the strivings in the flesh. Uh, but you must only uh, be a poor, a dumb sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to receive all of his benefits. Amen. How do you know you're a sheep? Well, look what the Bible says. He says, I'm the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and watch this, and am known of mine. Right. Am known of mine. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, well, we, we've already defined this word know. It refers to the intimate love that Jesus has for his sheep. And Jesus says that, that my sheep, the ones that I've died for, the ones that I loved, uh, they know that they are my sheep because they reciprocate that Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, the question that you need to ask yourself tonight is not did God elect me before the foundation of the world. Uh, don't concern yourself with those things. Uh, not did Jesus uh, die for me. But ask yourself tonight, uh, do you love him? Do you love him? Amen. Amen. Yes. And if you do, I can say that you're one of his sheep because he says that the ones that love him are his sheep. It's, it's, it's very clear here. He, he had a, a love for his people. Uh, that is why he came. Oh, because he loved me, my Savior died. Oh, the cross was crucified. Uh, no greater love by mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name. He loved me so. Amen. Now I am his. He's mine, I know. He suffered it all because he loved me. Amen. Out of ivory palaces, into a world of woe, only his great eternal love may my Savior go. Hallelujah. Oh, but the Bible declares that not only does he know his sheep, but his sheep know him. Not only did he love them, but they in turn love him. And we love him because he first loved us. Right. Ask yourself that tonight. Search your own heart. Oh, with all of the affections for worldly pursuits, with all the love that you have uh, for other things, is there a affection, oh, a tender longing for the Lord Jesus Christ within you tonight. Oh, or is your heart waxed cold towards the Savior, towards the Good Shepherd? If it is, uh, you can have no assurance that you are indeed one of his sheep. Oh, if you, if you are void of love for the Savior tonight, I don't want you to lay any claim upon his death. If you're void of love for the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I, I don't want you to be sure of his love for you. See, I, I, I fear that what we've created by preaching uh, this Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life, uh, and if you want to subject yourself to him and obey him, you can. Uh, if not, he just loves you anyways. Is we have a generation of Christians that, that, that have falsely believed that are truly not Christians, right. and they're going to bust hell wide open all You're the right. time, Amen. having full assurance that God loved them. Mm. Amen. 
And in an effort to be kind, in an effort to be compassionate, in an effort to tickle ears, in an effort not to offend the flesh, we've given multitudes upon multitudes a false assurance. Amen. I don't want any of you to have a false assurance. Amen. Amen. I want you to search yourself, examine yourself. If you are his sheep, you will love him. If, if you are one of his, you will know him intimately and personally. Do you have that relationship with him tonight? Oh, we say sweet hour of prayer. Do you, do you have that sweet hour of prayer? Can you go to him and boldly approach his throne? Uh, the, the sheep don't, don't stand out in the pasture worrying about whether or not they'll be fed. They know that the shepherd will feed them. The, the sheep do not worry about predators that will come and attack them. Uh, when you drive by, you see sheep on the side of the road. They're, they're grazing. They're, they have no concern. Why? Because they, they have the trust and the safety of their shepherd. Mm -hmm. Amen. You who are fearful here tonight, you who are tossed about with care and concern, have you a good shepherd? I love my good shepherd tonight. Amen. 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 I, I, have a, I have a careless security tonight. I, I, I need not worry about tomorrow. I, I, I need not fear what will happen. I, I, I thank God that through all of the, the, the recent current events, I've been able to cling to my good shepherd. Amen. Thank you Can you say the same tonight? It, this is not a complicated truth. The good shepherd is so because he loves his sheep. He goes on to qualify this relationship. I want you to see this and don't miss this. If you don't get anything else out of it, I want you to get this. Look at this. He says in verse 15, As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. What is he saying here? Well, he said, I know my sheep and have known of mine, even as the Father knoweth me, and I know you say, what kind of relationship does the Lord Jesus Christ want to have with the sheep? The, the kind of relationship that he has with the Father. Mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I can't scratch the surface on that truth. I, I can't begin to comprehend. Here is eternal God. Here is the second person of the Trinity. Here is the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who enjoyed unbroken fellowship with his heavenly Father. He sat upon his right throne. He was ever before his face. Uh, he enjoyed the goodness of the Father. He enjoyed the blessings of the Father. Oh, what heartache. What heartbreak it had to be for Christ to not to be not to go to the cross, not to be crucified. Did you think that that an omnipotent God was was fearful of, of being crucified? Right. Amen. No, but you see, when he was in the garden, and his sweat became like unto drops of blood, and he knew of the cup that he had to drink. Right. Oh, the thing that burdened our Lord was that he knew that that communion that he had enjoyed with the Father was going to be broken yeah. there Amen. on the cross. Amen. 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 And he did that for you and me. Amen. He did that for you and me. We Amen. believe upon him. He did that for the sheep. Oh, he as though I, accursed and left alone, I as though he embraced and welcomed home. That's the gospel. That the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life, gave the relationship that he had with the Father for his people, for the sheep. Amen. The spotless, sinless Lamb of God Amen. came to make a wretch his treasure. That's it. And then he says, the relationship that I enjoyed with the Father, that's what I came to have with you. Right. Do you understand that? Amen. Yeah. He, he came so that he could know us uh, as he knew the Father. Then he goes on and he gives us the third reason. And that is this, that the good shepherd unites his sheep. Look at verse 16. He says, and other sheep I have, 
which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Uh, who are these other sheep? Well, Jesus Christ is there talking in the context of apostate Israel. He's there talking in the context of those disciples that he had in his day. Uh, but we know that after the Lord ascended up into heaven, uh, the plan of salvation did not end there. Uh, no, but he gave the commission to his church and to his people to go out and preach the gospel Amen. to every creature, to every nation. Oh, and I'm so glad that I'm one of these other sheep. Amen. That we're not of that fool. Uh, but that he will bring also. And uh, notice the divine certainty upon which he speaks here. Uh, notice the, the definite language uh, that the Lord Jesus uses. He says, them also I must bring. That uh, this is the must of divine certainty. That uh, this is the must of divine sovereignty. That uh, this is the must of divine necessity. He must bring them uh, because sheep cannot come on their own. That's it. Amen. It is not us who go out looking for our shepherd. It is the shepherd who came looking for us. You're right. The Bible says no man seeketh after God. There's no such thing as a seeker. We're, we're lost and dumb sheep. And the Lord Jesus comes, our great shepherd, purchases us, and then brings us. He says, I must bring. And then he says, they shall hear. I must, they shall. I must they shall, Christ the good shepherd, finds sheep who are dead in trespasses and sins, quickens them, and then leads them into everlasting life. Amen. This shall is the shall of the effectual call. That God gives spiritual ears to hear the voice of the good shepherd. Oh, oh uh, can you just rejoice tonight? Oh, how I love God's shalls and God's wills. He said that they shall hear my voice. Uh, he said I must bring them. Hey, you and I, when we say things like this, oh, I must do this, or I must do that, or I shall do this, and we don't do it. We never perform it. Oh, we fail others. We fail ourselves. Oh, but it is not so with God. When he says, I shall, it shall be. When he says, I must, it must be. When he says, they will, it will come to pass. Uh, even some of you here tonight that yet reject the Savior, oh, one day you will come. Oh, one day you must come. Why? Because it is not you that seeks after him, but he that is seeking after you. Herein lies the power of the gospel. That is, that it does not ask your consent, but it gives you your consent. It is a divine promise that all for whom Christ died will certainly come unto him. And Jesus was not gifted Calvary. He was not shortchanged at the cross. Oh, he did not shed his blood for a people that would never come. Oh, no, but the cross there, uh, there was equity. And all those whom he purchased with his own blood uh, became his eternal possession. He is not a weak and an anemic Christ Amen. that depends on the will of man for his success. Amen. Oh, we have so much talk uh, about this idea of free will. And everybody wants to have free will. Well, I, I just want you to know that if you want free will so badly, I'd urge you to look at Genesis chapter number 3 and see where your free will got you. Right. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. and that is the state of man here today. Uh, but I'm so glad that even though I cannot change my own nature, that I was born a sinner, and that is why I committed sins. I'm glad that the Lord Jesus not only can change what we do, but he can change who we are. Amen. Amen. You say, why does a pig like to flop around in the slop? Well, because he's a pig. Yeah, that's right. And what is he free to be? He's only free to be a pig. That's right. Well, friend, tonight, you who are dead in sins, let me say this. You are only free to be a sinner. And you're struggling so hard to conform behaviorally. You're struggling so hard to live up to a moral standard. You're struggling so hard to perform to a certain level of your parents or of your pastor or of, of your friends. You will never do it. You will always fail because you are a sinner. Your hope tonight is not to rely upon anything you do, but it is to flee to Christ that can change your identity.
He takes lost and rebellious sinners, and he takes that old sinful nature, and he grabs it up out of you and places it in the Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary so that your old man was crucified with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And then when he died, you died. That's right. And Jesus died so that you and your sins could die. And Jesus was raised from the dead so that you and not your sins, you and not your sins could be raised from the dead. Amen. That's the gospel. Amen. This is what Jesus believes about redemption. He says, I gave my life for the sheep. He says, I love the sheep. He says, I'm going to unite the sheep. I'm going to bring all of them, all of the elect from all ages. I'm going to unite them into one sheepfold. And that's why the Father loves Jesus. Verse 17, therefore doth my Father love me. This is his sovereign decision. See, all that we've been talking about tonight, the sacrifice that Christ made there on Calvary's cross, oh, this was not something that he was compelled to do. Uh, this was not something that was forced upon him. No, but this was a sovereign a decision that the Lord Jesus Christ made in and of himself. His death was of his own volition. Mm -hmm. Amen. He chose to come and die. He chose to come and give himself a ransom for many. Now, he was not obligated to do so. Right. Oh, but in the everlasting covenant, long before this world began, he agreed to do that Amen. on behalf of his people. Amen. He was a willing savior. Amen. It's a willing Savior. How could it any other way be still grace if he was not willing? And as Jesus concludes the exposition of his death, he stresses how voluntary and intentional his sacrifice on the cross was. Notice that he uses the word I six times here in verses 17 and 18, noting that it was a decision that he made. The cross was not a human accident. The cross was a divine appointment. It was not plan B. It was the eternal plan of God. And Jesus went to the cross in perfect harmony and unity with the decree of the Father from before the foundation of the world. That Jesus went to the cross to accomplish a specific work. That Jesus lived and died on purpose and for a purpose. Uh, he was in complete control of his own life Amen. and his own death as he subjected himself to the will of the Father. And the Father loves the Son because the Father loves obedience. And everything that Christ did was in perfect obedience to the will Amen. of the Father. Amen. And the sovereignty that Jesus exercised over his own life and death reveals that he chose to die for his people of his own free will and volition. No man took his life from him against his will. That's no right. No angry mob, Amen. no devil, You're no right. evil spirit. Right. It was not because the Jews conspired to kill him, though they did. It was not because the Roman government sentenced him to die, though it did. It was not because Judas betrayed him, though he did. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ went to Calvary's cross because he wanted to go. You're right. Amen. He made a sovereign decision to offer up his life because he loved the sheep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, alas, and did my Savior die. Amen. Yeah. And did my sovereign die? Oh, and did he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? That's it. He devoted himself for you and I to me. Right. He completely gave himself, not just his service, not just his teachings, not even just his love, but he gave himself. Oh, was it for crimes that I have done that he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Yeah. Therefore doth the Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. And no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Of this commandment I have received 
of the Father. Amen. He was in control of his own death, of his own burial, and of his own resurrection. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is the Christ of the Scriptures. This is the Christ that we must preach. This is a God who had total control over his own life. This is a God who could not be holden of death. There's Amen. an illustration that a friend of mine likes to use. I know we've got a lot of preachers here tonight, and uh, anybody that says they've never stolen anything good is a liar. And he says that uh, it kind of goes like this. That Jesus there, as he hung his head on Calvary's cross, oh, that, uh, oh, that he, he succumbed to death. And death had swallowed up the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Amen. Oh, and death though, was, was reveling in that meal that it had eaten. And death was saying, oh, I thought Moses tasted good. Oh, I love the prophets. Oh, but I think uh, that this is the best meal that I have ever had. Oh, and death was, was really doing good. Oh, but... But later on that Saturday night, death began to have a little bit of indigestion. Uh, death reached for the Pepto-Bismol, but it was all empty. Uh, and death began to feel sick. Uh, and death could not make it uh, through the night. Uh, oh, to the glory of God. Early on Sunday morning, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he defeated death. Uh, he rose from the grave. And now he is alive forevermore. And death is a defeated foe. And the grave as the Lord Jesus Christ exercises ultimate victory. Amen. Oh, Amen. this is what our Lord Jesus believes about redemption. This is what the Lord Jesus believes about his own death and life. He said, I have power to take it up again. He did this for a particular people. And you know that you are one of those particular people. If tonight, by faith, you believe in and upon him that he died for your sins and you have a love for him tonight. Oh, I, I pray that you reject not the Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, but that you look upon him with love. That you look upon him with affection. And that you know that he died. For you, let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name all for these three nights of meetings. And Lord, we thank you for your gospel. We thank you for the glory of God displayed there on Calvary's cross, the utmost manifestation of your love for us. Oh, and Lord, we, we thank you for your death. We thank you for the death of Christ, sending him into the world. And Lord, I feel that I am far too feeble to preach such a transaction, such a death as the Lord Jesus Christ died. Oh, but Lord, I... I want to thank you for Calvary. I want to thank you for the blood that he shed. Lord, I ask that you would yet use the word of God to convict that sinner that is nearest hell. Yes, Lord. Lord, that you would save their soul. Lord, that you would convert them now while there is yet time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Oh, for that one that's struggling, would you make their calling and election sure this evening? Lord, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.